I wanted to talk to you about uh, Professor Morandi, uh, a development that's happened, and I'm sure uh, you have at least heard of Scott Ritter. Uh, he's been very uh, vocal about Palestine and against this genocide. Well, I'm going to play uh, quickly what happened to him. Uh, his house was raided by the FBI on now suspicions of FARA violations, the Foreign Agent Registration Act. Um, and I just want to play quickly, uh, Professor Morandi, a, a video of his response to the uh, raid of his house by the FBI. They came in actually with a SWAT team, we've learned later and have taken uh, just a lot from his how home and we are going to hear scott quickly talk about what happened all right as you guys figured out the fbi executed a search warrant at my residence the search warrant is related to uh, concerns apparently the u.s government has about violations of the foreign agent registration act i will tell you right now i am not in violation of the foreign agent registration act i have not done anything that um We'll do it and hopefully by executing the search warrant and taking the materials that they did, they will rapidly reach that conclusion. I will say that uh, things like this have a chilling effect on free speech. There's no doubt that I'm being targeted because of statements I've made uh, about U.S. policy uh, in Ukraine. I'm being targeted because I have made an effort to try and improve relations between the United States and Russia to try to bring about arms control, to bring about peace. Apparently, somebody in the U.S. government takes umbrage at this, so they executed a search warrant. The FBI was extraordinarily professional. I have no complaints against the personnel that did this. I do have complaints against the personnel that caused this to happen. This has a chilling impact on free speech. The idea that you have a free speech right in America when you execute it in a manner that the U.S. government takes exception to and they launch a, uh, a search warrant, um, that is an intimidation factor. I can say that I am not intimidated, and I will continue to speak out, and I will continue to do what I do because that's my responsibility as an American citizen, and I will continue to operate in that manner. So um, I think I gave you all the answers you need at this point in time. I would request that you respect that and uh, let me and my wife get on with our business. What time did they show up? You know, this is not anything, um, you know, new in, in retrospect, Professor Morandi, because we had Serena Shim, who was killed very mysteriously for her participation in Iranian media. Of course, since the Ukraine conflict, we've seen. I knew um, her. Right. All right. Yes. Yes. And, um, you know, we've seen people uh, like Lee Camp and Abby Martin have their content completely scrubbed because of the Ukraine conflict and justifications around the same issue. That's and of course there was the Uhuru movement, the African People's Socialist Party, Amalia Shatela, now under indictment for FARA violations. Professor Morandi, your reaction because you know you hail from Iran and we hear a lot about Iran's so-called authoritarianism. But what's your reaction to this? Well, I knew Serena Shim. I had met her in Beirut. She was uh, when she was when she was killed. She was alongside the Turkish border with Syria. She was reporting on how, uh, through Turkey, ISIS was being supported inside Syria. And she was pointing out how World Food Program trucks were being used by ISIS. And so the World F Food Program is, of course, an international organization. And then uh, Turkish intelligence apparently called, I don't, I mean, the story is, uh, goes back a long way, and I may not have everything exactly right. but. Um, Turkish intelligence accused her of being a spy. And then, of course, hours later, she, she was killed. Uh, it's difficult to believe that it was an accident. But, uh, but in general, yes, I think it's, 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 it's amazing that in the United States, people, are, uh, people like Scott are harassed and others are harassed. And by the way, I should point out that there are many Iranians and Palestinians in the United States who've gone to jail and who've been in jail for a very long period of time for, for no real reason at all. In fact, one Iranian called Say, whose name was Sayed Mahmoud Musabi, he was in jail for in solitary confinement for two or three years, and I actually um, helped his lawyer get him out of jail. And all of the it was all uh, fabricated evidence. The United States used uh, the IRS and and other means to 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 uh, to put him in jail. 
and in jail he got cancer and he when he after he was freed he soon died afterwards but the reason why they put they punished him the reason why they went after him was because he was he was pro resistance and there are lots of people like there are these people who sent i don't know a thousand dollars to a to a um a a charity in gaza and then they were arrested and they've been in jail in the united states for years because they were accused of supporting terrorism so there are lots of people in the united states who are under the radar who and and who are just stuck in jail but no one knows about them but but fortunately scott is a well-known person and i think the u.s government's making a big mistake because they're only going to raise his profile uh further uh but uh but yes it's this freedom in the united states only goes so far as when u.s interests are not touched or not harmed uh people like myself and many many like me we've lost i, I they've I, they've de deleted my facebook account my instagram account my own students have come and told me that we don't like uh or retweet your posts because we're afraid that if one day we want to study abroad uh, they will check our accounts and then they will you know refuse a visa or they'll we will get into some sort of trouble so you know and i know many people across iraq syria lebanon and yemen i don't know personally but i've heard that their accounts their online accounts online accounts have been deleted so but now it's coming home uh, and and it's not just these minorities or Muslims or Iranians or Palestinians or or Arabs, but it's people like Scott, and I find it really shocking, and I I hope that uh, Scott is not intimidated, and I hope he doesn't get in into any trouble. He's done a, a lot of very good work, uh, like many other activists. There, as I you know as I said earlier, there may be disagreements over who he meets or who I speak to or who you speak with, but. I think that everyone who opposes genocide and everyone who opposes the war in Ukraine and everyone who opposes what's going on, uh, what the empire is doing right now, we should all uh, be united and that we should defend one another in, so that uh, our, our friends and our com comrades and our sisters and brothers don't get into trouble and so that we can work together to bring an end to these very painful circumstances. Yeah, and and one of the things that is striking is that I believe that this was done similar to Amalia Shatela, where there was a visit to Russia. You know, these two individuals, Amalia Shatela, of course, his organization, and now Scott Ritter, uh, they have been going to Russia uh, at, at certain times. I think Amalia went once, and Scott has gone a few times to build people to people relations uh, as a an effort toward peace and now uh you know you live in a country uh, uh professor morandi that's under sanctions so uh, i've heard that most people who go to iran and come back who visit from the united states always get harassed uh, what do you have to what do you make of this dynamic because it's not only chilling to free speech it seems like it, it's chilling to the overall project that I think you and I both describe to, which is building a more peaceful world, building a, a, a more improved multipolar world where we can, exactly as you said, be united and work toward ends that uh, are the antithesis of the genocide uh, in Gaza and the wars that we see uh, the collective West waging. Well, it's not just um, Americans who travel to Iran and go back, uh, who get into trouble. It's people who travel to Iran from European countries also uh, who get into trouble when they go back or when they travel to, or when they want to travel to the United States. And I think it, it, it's very revealing that, well, if, if Iran was such a ugly regime, if it was so unpopular and despised by its own people, then you would imagine that Americans traveling to Iran would help bring down the regime. And what Europeans traveling to Iran would help bring down this so-called regime as they like to call it. Because this interaction would only further help awaken Iranians to their, you know, to their misery or whatever it is that the West likes to uh, describe it as being. 
but what they do is they, but the reality turns out to be that they don't want people to visit Iran because they don't want people to see the truth. They only want their mainstream journalists to come to Iran, and those mainstream journalists are not going to say the truth. If they were to say the truth, they'd be tweeting, they'd be posting about Gaza. Do you see any of these mainstream journalists showing outrage about what's happening in these camps, in these torture camps? No. And do you see mainstream media making a big issue out of it? No. So these journalists who come to Iran, they're not going to tell the truth. But so the Americans don't want people to come to Iran because they don't want them to see the reality as it really is. But we have to continue pushing. And people in the United States and the West, they have to continue making sacrifices. People like Scott are making sacrifices. People like our friends at the Gray Zone and our, you know, whether in Europe, uh, our friends in Europe or uh, the Electronic Intifada in the United States or whether it's uh, you know, uh, our young um, young people on the streets of London or Paris or elsewhere who are protesting, all, all of these people have to be, we have to keep everyone on the same page and refrain from targeting one another because this is, this sort of divide and rule is exactly how the empire has been able to hold, maintain hold over all of us for centuries. What they've done in our region is has always been divide and rule. They've always tried to tell people that this other sect is evil, how this other race is evil, how this other religion is evil. You see Arabic media constantly putting out propaganda against because they're 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 controlled by these regimes. This race, this sect, they have these strange beliefs and and they spread misinformation to keep people divided. And that's what the Western media is doing in Latin America. Right now, for example, in, in in Venezuela, I was in Venezuela for the elections. I was a, I was um, a, I was a monitor, uh, an observer, like w almost one thousand other people, and we saw. I saw no irregularities. None of the observers who I met saw any irreg irregularities. Many of the observers were professionals. They were from Kenya, from South Africa, from other different countries, and they were they would carry out regular elections. That was their job. So they were monitoring the situation. None of them saw anything irregular. And now the main opponent who the, the Americans are supporting, they won't take their evidence to the Supreme Court in Venezuela. If they're so confident about fraud, they would do that, but they don't do that. Why? Because obviously the evidence is not uh, the real thing. But the Western media will simply repeat and repeat uh, propaganda against Venezuela. And then most people or many people across Latin America will believe that propaganda. The same is true inside the United States. Those people who are resisting genocide in England and in the UK and the United States and Europe, they are going to be demonized. They are going to be, uh, they're going to be targeted. So it is very important for all of us, despite our differences, our differing views, to be united and to protect one another so that uh, people will not be cornered and people will not be intimidated. And so that we could reach that point, which you were alluding to, where we could have a better world for our children and grandchildren to live in. Yes, indeed. And it, it's so important uh, in this particular case too, because I'm glad you made all these connections because it is all connected. Uh, of the repression that everyone is facing around this very core issue of of the U.S. empire trying to maintain its uh, status and, and all of the uh, horrors that comes with it. Um, it. It's so important that we are able to, as you alluded to with Venezuela, see for ourselves what the truth really is. But doing this to someone like Scott Ritter, or whether we're talking about Malayosha Taylor, so many others sends the message that this indeed is a crime, this very act of just attempting to show other people uh, that this is, uh, that we are getting maybe a reality that is uh, a very distorted or we are getting a message very distorted from what the reality is. Uh, any any final words, uh, Professor Morandi, on this topic? No, no, thank you very much. I hope Scott uh, is... Um... Is, is well. I hope his family is well. 
I know it, I'm sure it, it's very difficult because neighbors will be concerned and people will raise questions and uh, and of course the media will be unkind and they'll say all sorts of nasty and uh, and uh, negative things. Uh, but uh, hopefully everyone who has heard the news, they will support him and they will support everyone else who is supporting peace in Ukraine and who's supporting the Palestinian people and who believe that uh, supremacism and uh, ethno-supremacism and apartheid has no place in Palestine. <laughs>